All right, Poco X3 Pro, Awaken OS, new update based on Android 12. I flashed it a few hours back, so this by no means is a complete review. This is a quick review in which I am going to tell you my initial impressions of this particular ROM. I've ran a couple of benchmarks. I've got a feel of the ROM so that before you actually go ahead and invest your time and patience in going ahead and flashing this ROM, you will understand where the team has reached, how much more optimization is needed, what are the benchmark numbers and what are the battery numbers and all those things. So before we actually get into the review, if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe? Because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, then join us on Telegram. We have more than 1500 people over there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you think the hard work is worth the effort, well, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, now let's see what we have here. Awaken OS version 2.2, official Android 12, updated on the 19th of December, 2021. So you have change log, hotfix release, fixed FPC fingerprint, fixed some issues with volume plus power button screenshots. And then you have a support section, which is their dedicated group. And you can go ahead and join there and all sorts of stuff. So we are talking about Android 12 over here, right? Let's go to settings real quick, right off the bat. Let's go to the Android version 12. This is running the Litten kernel. This is something I'm hearing for the first time. Probably a kernel that I've not heard of or tried. This is 2.2 RS or RS, whatever they call it, December security patch. The moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that this ROM boots very, very deep loaded. There are no extra applications. The performance is pretty decent, but the benchmark numbers have to say otherwise. Now, if you talk about the Google feed, this itself has become a benchmark for us, right? But yes, Google feed is pretty smooth. It works fine. If you go to the home screen while scrolling, it is doing a great job. So nothing to worry there. If you scroll from the top to bottom, you have your quick tiles, which does have a built-in screen recorder. Let's see where we have that. Screen recorder, screen recorder. Where did you go? Oh, well, guess what? Am I missing something over here? Yeah, you have it. That's what I said. I saw it somewhere. Anyways, so you do have the screen recorder, your privacy access tiles. And if you go to the screen recorder, you do have some additional options now, like record audio internal and external, show touches on screen, show stop dot long press to move it, lower quality for smaller file and bigger file size limit. So start the screen recording. Now understand this is a holy grail for built-in screen recorders on custom ROMs for the Poco X3 Pro. Reason being it lags. Yeah, I think they are getting there where they are fixing it. So this is a pretty, wow. It's pretty neat. It's, it's really, really smooth. It's working fine. It's recording everything and it is showing the touches on the screen. It's doing what is promised. Let's go ahead and stop the screen recording here and let's increase the volume a little bit so we can hear our own voice. Yeah, I mean, the screen recording is fine, but the screen recording audio is sort of buggy at the start, like two, three seconds, and then it is doing a fine job. So no big complaints there. I'm pretty sure they will fix it later. Now, if you go further and you go to the edit menu over here, you will see that you have a few more quick tiles available like ambient display, caffeine and compass, sound, CPU info, reboot and audio mode. So all these features are present. They are working fine. You do have the advanced reboot menu in Awaken OS and then you have a shortcut to go to settings as well. Now the camera situation as always is very, very basic. Nothing to write home about very, very basic camera. And then you have home settings in which you have, yep, pixel launcher, not disappointed, but yeah, launcher is doing a great job as far as customization is concerned. You do have themed icons and curated culture wallpapers over here. So let's try this. This looks like something new, right? I've not tried this. Wow, bam. This looks great. It looks fine. It works fine. Monet UI doing a great job. Nothing to worry there. Now, if you actually go to settings, you will be surprised to know that this is a ROM, which is pretty bare bones. It doesn't really come with a ton of customization. So network and internet connected devices, apps, notifications, battery. You don't have thermal profiles over here. The phone was at 100% when I started using it. And we've had about 
one hour of screen on time and we are still at around 81%. So five hours for a POCO X3 Pro screen on time is quite less. But I understand I was running benchmarks, I was stressing the device and the charging speeds are pretty rock solid as well. So no problems or complaints there. And then you have sound in which you have the MI sound enhancer with Dirac and Hi-Fi, that works fine. If you go to display, you do have lock screen customization, advanced settings for always on display. I would not recommend you to use that. You have pickup, hand wave and pocket, pocket mode, pocket mode, pocket mode as well. You do have privacy for your lock screen, double tap to check, check phone. What's, what's happening today with my words? Anyways, uh, you have double tap to check phone. So if you don't keep, yep. Double tap once, you can check the phone. Double tap twice, you can unlock it. Pretty neat, works fine and looks great. Saves you battery as well. You have dark theme, headline font, uh, monet engine. So you have the option to override or disable monet UI as well. Prevent accidental wake up. Display customization, so battery icon, clock settings, status bar items, 4G icons. So they've not given you a dedicated menu for customization. Under the standard Android 12 settings itself, they've incorporated their customization, which is also a good thing. It's just that you have to go two, three, four levels down to find your specific option. And if somebody is new to say Awaken OS like me, I would probably not look for that feature or miss that feature and stuff like that. Apart from this in security, you have pixel imprint, which works absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. And you have system in which you have live translate. That works fine. You have gestures, one hand mode, system navigation, swipe to screenshot, including the scrolling screenshot. So these options are present, advanced restart, playback control. So, you know, all these features that are available in these custom ROMs are working fine and they make the experience even better. But what really matters is performance. Most of the time, a lot of people are performance centric and it is important that you be performance centric. So I did say that the charging speeds and the battery backup is pretty decent on this ROM. You do have some customization which will allow you to make changes to your device to make it your own, right? Now let's talk about the important stuff. So if you go to say safety net over here, let's go ahead and run this. Bam, safety net passes by default. If you go to the Play Store, go to settings, device is certified. So your financial applications are secured, nothing to worry. Also, as I said, SE Linux status on this is enforcing. Widewine L1 is working fine and doing a great job. As you can see over here, DRM info. Now, I was not able to run Antutu for some reason on this particular ROM, but let's go ahead and look at the CPU throttle test. Now, this is a little disappointing. I had two runs and both of them were 73% throttling, 171.865 GIPS. I'm pretty sure this is a one-off case and something that probably I would have done wrong, but my job is to give you guys the numbers and that is what we are doing over here. If you go to Geekbench though, the story is a little different because it gives you decent performance. 768 single core, 2616 multi-core is a decent job for a Snapdragon 860. So all in all, if you ask me, Awaken OS in this particular update, if you're not someone who is a performance freak or someone who wants hardcore performance, extreme gaming and stuff, you can definitely use this ROM as a daily driver. It is working fine. There are no major issues and it looks pretty decent as well. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular update. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.